Hi guys, Pauline here. Welcome or welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the book The High Five Habit by Mel Robbins. And no, she's not related to Tony Robbins because that's what I thought at first too. But before we get into it, let me first give you a high five. And if you're near a mirror, please look into the mirror and give yourself a high five. Because this is what this book is all about. So now, let's get to the point of this video. So at first you might be thinking, oh, like high-fiving myself, that's kind of weird, right? But, you know, this book is about like 200 something pages and you're like, how much can you talk about high-fiving yourself? What Mel Robbins actually is trying to tell you is how this habit alone can really help transform how you feel about yourself. So the core idea of this book is to start each day by high-fiving yourself. And the idea of this is that if you do this every single day, it will create positive changes in your life. So what you're supposed to do is get up in the morning, go to the bathroom or go to your room or wherever there's a mirror, look at yourself in the mirror and just give yourself a high five. And this act is supposed to be done every single day. And the more you do it, the more you get the benefits of it. So the first main idea is this idea of self-encouragement. This is what this high five embodies. So if we think about it, when we give someone a high five, it's a it's a gesture of encouragement. For example, you're on a sports team and someone scores a goal, you high five them. Or they do something cool, you high five them. Someone gets a good grade on a test, you high five them. Or just anytime you're in a group thing and you accomplish something, you high five each other. So this idea is that you are encouraging yourself with the high five. So if you just high five yourself, you then in turn are practicing self love and self encouragement. She also talks about how this habit is supposed to help break negative thought cycles and it allows you to start the day on a positive note as opposed to getting into that negative self talk and negative mindset so early on into the morning. That way if you high five yourself and you're showing self approval self approval encouragement, it's it's starting the day on a more positive note and so you're less inclined to speak negatively because you've just been high fived. It also talks about the idea that this act, if you do it every single day for months, years, it takes away from self-criticism and pushes you more into a self-love, self-compassion category and that's more of a healthy relationship to have with yourself and for your mindset. And a high five actually physically helps you as well. A physical gesture of a high five releases dopamine aka the feel-good hormone which then in return creates a positive emotional response in yourself. So essentially you're just giving yourself dopamine at the start of the day, which is great. This allows you to set a positive tone for the day, which will enhance your mood or can help enhance your mood. And so then you can feel better about yourself. So now let's get into it. So the idea of high-fiving yourself every day and you're like, oh wow, is this actually gonna work? Am I gonna stick through with it? So. Mel Robbins actually says that consistency is key, shocker, like with everything else in life. And I think that can be the toughest part because you kind of fall off or you feel like, oh, it's not really working. Why should I keep up with it? But essentially what she says is that this high five in the morning is supposed to be a non-negotiable. So you're supposed to just add it into your daily morning routine with the other things that you would just mindlessly do anyways. So for example, if you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth, that's a non-negotiable, right? So then you're supposed to implement this high five in the morning with that routine to make it more doable and so that you stick with it. And so when you stick with it, then you're going to be able to get the benefits of it more quicker and just actually see what it can do for your life and for your mindset and for your self-esteem confidence and self-love and worthiness. It does say that it might feel a little bit awkward at first, just high-fiving yourself in the mirror, but the more you do it and you practice it, it's just gonna become a part of your routine and it's not really going to feel awkward at that point because I mean, you just kind of do it every single day. Now, I wanna share two, I wouldn't say quotes, but there are two passages of the book that I really relate to and I feel like it's something that people in their 20s are really struggling with and because I understand this and I just want to share because I hope that it can help someone out there that is in their 20s specifically 
it, it helps everyone, but specifically if you're in your 20s and you kind of feel lost or you're unsure, these two passages can really help because I feel like they really spoke to me. Okay, so the first one is on page 40. And it's this question. It says, what if I don't feel like doing it? And I really relate to this because I see, I feel, I feel like this happens a lot. You don't feel like doing a lot of things, but you're supposed to do it anyway, because it's going to help you. So what she says is, what if, so the question is, what if I don't feel like doing it? She, she writes, do it anyway. Part of the reason why you don't have what you want in your life is because when you don't feel like doing it, you don't do it. Your life only gets easier when you do the hard things all the time. Push through your resignation and do it. So I hope this kind of, I hope this is something that kind of woke you up if you are one of these people because a lot of times we'll be like, I don't feel like doing it. But it doesn't matter what you feel, you should just still do it. Now I understand this is also situational and it depends on, you know, how we're feeling physically and sometimes that can relate to other big rooted things, but just for the average, like for the most part, we're just getting into our heads a lot. That can be detrimental to us, you know, staying focused and actually achieving what we want to achieve in our lives. So what she says is, you know, just do it anyway, regardless of how you're feeling. Because also feelings are fleeting and how you feel now might not be how you feel later and how you felt 30 seconds ago might not feel how you feel now. So it's not really a good way to kind of have your life be dictated based on feelings alone. And the second passage that I really loved that really spoke to me is on page 151 and it says your dreams are your responsibility no one is coming and i've heard of mel robbins always talk about this this idea of no one is coming and it's this idea of no one's coming to help you stop waiting for everyone stop waiting on other people you have to make things happen for yourself and she goes on to say this if you're sitting in dallas dreaming of being an actor and waiting for an agent from California to find you, no one is coming. If you are lying on your couch in London waiting for someone to set you up on a date, no one is doing it. If you think about growing your business in Sydney and you're waiting for your first client to magically appear and buy skincare from you, it's not happening. If you want a new future, act like it. No matter how scared you are, just start. Wake up every day and high five the person you see in the mirror. Then set a deadline and get started. Wow. I hope that this actually helped you as well and you resonated with what she was saying because I do think that we can kind of get into this rut, especially in your 20s where you're still trying to figure out what exactly you want to do, where you want to be, where do you want to live, and just things of that sort. So I think it's very important to understand that it at some point you need to stop waiting and just waiting for someone to rescue you, waiting for someone to get you a job, waiting for other people to make things happen for you because guess what? You're the only person that has the best interest for you always. You know what you want and you can help yourself get there. Basically, if you just live your life more positively and you're at a better headspace, the chances of you doing things is actually gonna be higher. That's why this book, The High Five Habit, really helps you because it allows you to do a physical gesture every single morning that can help reinforce these feelings of self-love, positivity, self-compassion. And in turn, this will set you up for success and it will make you feel better during the day and help your mental health. So if you're looking for a book that helps you break free from negative self-talk, helps you cultivate self-confidence, self-compassion, and you just really want to kind of see what other people are saying because she does have testimonials here from other people that have implemented the high five habit. And I would recommend checking this book out. I think it's really cool. It's a good, easy read. And you know, she kind of gets to the point of things and it's very digestible. And I just think it's something really good, especially if you're kind of in the beginning stages of your more 
I wouldn't say self-development, but you're just kind of trying to like figure yourself out and work on yourself and just work towards being the version of you that you admire the most, then I would recommend this book. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe for more things Purely Pauline, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! See? I high-fived you. Bye!